Hey it's Marcus here with three steps that you can do using your mind, your attitude, and your approach to life that can accelerate your healing, expand not only your health and well-being, but also how you feel and experience the world. So over the next three short videos, I'm gonna share with you, I think, three principles that are so powerful and transformative that I know that it's gonna have an impact on you, your health, and your quality of life. So first, I wanna talk about optimism. And optimism is that wondrous state of a sense of hope and anticipation of good things that are going to happen. It's a sense of belief and confidence in things becoming better over time because you're deserving of it, because you're taking actions that lead to it, and that you have a sense of inevitability that good things happen to you because you are making choices consistent with, in alignment with good health, good experiences and good outcomes. And I guess the first thing I want to do in talking about optimism and sharing this thought with you is recognize that there are certainly some people that are naturally really positive really optimistic and always have a wonderful way of viewing the world and that's a beautiful place to be and i also recognize there are other people on the other hand that maybe have a more conservative view of the world and perhaps have had some challenging experiences difficult situations and circumstances in their life and they're far more conservative and perhaps not only just conservative, they are uncertain, they lack confidence and past experience tells them that good things don't always happen. And not only do good things not always happen, they may have a run on effect. It's this bad thing happens and this bad and it just seems to go on. And then it's very difficult to recapture a sense of euphoria about the world, a confidence and a belief that positive things are in fact going to happen and therefore it's difficult to feel that optimistic sense. So the first thing I wanna do in having this conversation is recognize there is, there is a continuum between the two. The, the Pollyannas of the world, these absolute optimists that believe everything good happens. And then there's the people that live in despair and have a certain confidence that the world is out to get them. And obviously, you know, not, most of us aren't at those polar opposites and we're somewhere in that continuum. In order to heal, you need to move the, not, the dial this way. And the reason being, when you experience doubt, uncertainty, when you have negativity or fear, maybe even hold on to anger and resentment, that pain changes your brain. It changes your brain to produce a chemical cascade called catecholamines. And these are pro-inflammatory and pain producing. So when you have anger or resentment, when you are fearful of what the world is going to bring, you're also gonna produce then adrenaline and cortisol. And these stress hormones are also pro-inflammatory. So there's now all of these changes going on in your mind that set you up for pain, for inflammation, for interference and interruption to health and healing. And that means that your mind has a dramatic part to play in your health and your well-being, and, and creating repair in your body as well. So I wanted to share a couple of things about creating optimism and, and how we may go about doing that, knowing that it's not necessarily easy or effortless. And you know, I'm going to share a story here to give you a sense that it can be done though. And the way it gets done um, is firstly, in my background, I went to Queanbeyan High School and Queanbeyan High School was known from us growing up as the most sarcastic school on the planet. We just battered everyone. Teachers battered us, we battered each other. And even to this day, you know, people still say, my gosh, there was such a negative uh, culture in that environment at school. It may still be present in schools and environments today, but I knew that I grew up with that and I had a really sarcastic um, aspect to my per personality and a very belittling and negative um, area. And, and I, I had a lot of stress both at school and growing up. And so I know that it's not always easy to be in that mindset. And I would say that I had a very, very negative mindset growing up. And I often say that I represent hope for, for every person that they can become positive and optimistic because I certainly am now, but I wasn't that way early on. And so the first pathway of creating optimism that I'm gonna share in this first video and then we'll have another two videos after this or things I know that were really wonderful for you. The first skill set is optimism, and that is by the process of titration. Now, titration, a word most of you probably do not know, not familiar with, unless you did chemistry at school, which I did, and it was very traumatic, and I didn't like it. But the word um, titration is super cool. It means adding one chemical to another until you see a chemical reaction take place, and it's just one drop, two drops, three drops. It's a really sensitive experimental process, and 
in what we, what we had to do in one experiment of titration is we had this purple liquid, we added it to a clear liquid and you had to work out what concentration this liquid was by dropping it into here and waiting for the chemical reaction to take place. Now, too much information about chemistry. I know it's stressing you like it's stressing me, but I wanted you to understand titration. It's a process of drop, dry drop by drop, small change by small change until boom, the big transformation takes place. And positivity and optimism is a little bit like that. Yes, you may have had some difficult times, some challenging thoughts, and that feels like it has weighed you down because it has titrated you into a negative mind frame, into a mindset of overwhelm and stress. Well, the reverse is true. And to do that, I want you to think about a glass of water. Imagine for a moment, and I don't know if you've seen Queanbeyan River, it's brown, it's festy, it's pretty putrid. So if I went and got a big glass of water, nice brown water and said, hey, would you like to drink this? I'm absolutely certain you would say, that's disgusting, I'm not going to drink that. And that would be true because this is a poison now. It's a putrid um, body of water. Drinking is going to make you sick. So you wouldn't drink that. Now, let's for a moment just imagine I got a 10 litre bottle, big, that's really heavy by the way, big bottle from the snowy mountain right at the mouth at the most crystal, pristine, crystal clear water available. And I poured that into a cup. Would you drink that? Absolutely, it's pristine water. Or if we had to get it out of our, our, our own faucets here in our houses, would you drink that? The answer is obviously a yes, because it's been cleaned, it's cleansed, it's pure, it's pristine, you will drink it. So now imagine for a moment, I say, I'm gonna grab this 10 liter container and I'm going to put it in this festy queen bean water. I'm gonna drop 20 mil in there. Now the cup's full, so to adding 20 mil to an already full cup, you get an overflow effect. Now, but I put 20 mil in there, still brown, still looks festy. You can still see some things floating and swimming around in there. Are you going to drink it? No. What about if I add another 20 mil? Well, it's still brown, hasn't changed that much. No, you're still not going to drink it. Another 20 mil? No. What if I start adding 50 mil and then 70 mil? And you're noticing it's getting lighter brown and now no longer looks as festy, but when you hold it up to the light, you can still see things swimming in there and floaty bits that you don't even know, want to know what it is. Of course, you're still not going to drink it. But what then if I poured all the 10 liters, so I just get flushing all the water out until finally you hold it up and you say it looks pristine, crystal clear, just like the water. Would you drink it now? And the answer would obviously be yes, because you've flushed away all the putrid water and you've only now got the pristine, fresh water. And that's the process of titration. That is cleansing out the old by, by bringing in the new. And that's how we start optimism. That's how we start positivity. And that means every time you have a negative thought, you fill it with a positive thought. When you wanna flush away the putrid, you bring in the cleansing. So we start catching our thoughts. Oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. I know, I'm not gonna let that happen. I made a mistake and I'm getting better with every decision I make. Oh, that person is so irritating. That person is making a cry for help because they have stress, frustration and fear. We capture our thoughts, we put positive thoughts in place of the negative thoughts, we titrate our mind with the good to flush out the bad, to create an opportunity to experience a better, healthier mind and therefore life and therefore world. So that's my first thought for you. And you know, I remember many, many years ago, I read a book, The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. That's a fantastic resource. And there are so many other great books to start titrating your mind, putting positive thoughts in there and elevating your thinking so that you can move in the direction of the emotional state, the mental state, the thinking and the feeling for the experience that you want and to remove that interference of the stress hormones and the positive cascade of inflammation in your body by negative thinking and Vincent Peale called it stinking thinking. We want the positive thoughts and I wanted to create this video for you to start putting in your mind those positive thoughts to create the positive healing and experience for your body. So I know that you can start doing that now because if I can do it, you can do it. And together, when we do this together, we make the world a better place. I'll see you in the next video.